Singapore has been monitoring and studying the genetic makeup of the COVID-19 virus in confirmed cases. The co-chair of the multi-ministry task force on COVID-19, Lawrence Wong, says that improving sequencing capabilities will enhance the fight against the virus. And joining us live is Professor Gavin Smith from the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at the Duke NUS Medical School. Good evening, Professor. In layman terms, if you will, what can whole genome sequencing reveal? Uh, good evening. So genome sequencing reveals the genetic code of an organism and the genetic code controls the properties and nature of an organism, um, including viruses like SARS-CoV-2. On a practical level, in the laboratory, the sequencing produces a series of letters, uh, A, C, G, or T, that represents a genetic code, uh, which is the DNA and RNA sequences that um, are frequently mentioned. And then the A, C, G, and T molecules um, make up our DNA and RNA, and each animal or plant and virus has a unique set of these letters. Um, so by comparing these codes, we're able to identify different virus strains and uh, through that track their uh, evolution and their transmission. And from that, Professor, you're also able to reveal if infections indeed came from the same source. Yes. Yeah, so basically, by comparing the genetic sequences, we can recreate the family history of the viruses. So much like a normal um, family genealogy or family tree. And so we can use the virus genomes to work out whether the viruses from two different people are related or not. And so if the two viruses are related, then it's likely that those people were infected from a common source, even if we can't find an epidemiological link between those two individuals. And uh, in the contrast is that if the two viruses are not genetically related, then it means that we um, probably have different sources of infection for those two individuals. So this is a very powerful technique, Professor, that's actually helped authorities uncover, uh, you know, seemingly unconnected cases, the links between those. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, essentially. So there, there's been a few instances um, where the genetic, the genetic data has been able to make linkages between cases where there hasn't been a clear epidemiological link. And it's also useful in instances of importations, for example. So if somebody uh, enters into a country that comes from a, um, a certain area and they're positive when they're sequenced, it can reveal information about where they may have uh, picked up the infection. Is it also effective and accurate in sequencing? Is the sequencing in detecting new strains? Yeah, so it's the principal, um, the principal technique that we use to actually identify different strains. So at the moment, there's a lot of discussion about different strains. There's this UK variant, um, and there was uh, been a number of different variants that have uh, had some attention in the media. And they have been identified through genetic sequencing efforts. So I, th I think it's important when we're talking about virus strains just to keep in mind that viruses are always mutating, they're always changing, uh, and this is um, normal. And when we're talking about a different strain, we're talking about usually fairly major changes uh, in the genome of the virus that also affects the behaviour of the virus, such as its ability to infect um, people or... Uh, its transmissibility. Professor, what are the challenges to accurately mapping a virus like COVID-19? Uh, it's actually reasonably easy. The techniques are well established. I think some of the challenges include that um, it can be difficult sometimes to get enough of the virus genetic material from the swab that has been taken from a patient or um, a, a patient that might have a low viral load. Um, and in those cases, it you know, might be necessary to um, perhaps culture the virus before there's sufficient material to sequence. Um, but in general, the, the 
the techniques are well established. Um, there is, it does take some time, it does take effort, and uh, of course there is a cost involved. And so I think the major challenge is really in um, scaling up the work. Um, uh, although it it's, is possible to generate um, quite a number of sequences in you know, a timeline of one to two days at the moment. Thank you, Professor, for sharing your knowledge with us this evening. Professor Gavin Smith from the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke and U.S. Medical School.